All right, basement gourmet. We're gonna make some cheese today. Some uh, blue cheese, Stilton style cheese. That's really easy cheese to make, I think. A lot of the recipes will tell you otherwise. Say this is an advanced recipe. I kind of consider it one of the easier cheeses to make. Uh, it doesn't require a press, um, so it's less equipment you need. A few extra steps, but uh, relatively straightforward cheese to make. Really delicious. So we're going to show you how we do it right here in the basement. Okay, first thing with cheese making, sanitization stuff has to be sanitized. And by sanitized, I don't mean uh, wash it in the sink with the sponge that you wash everything else with. I mean, sanitization for cheese making means boiling all the equipment, cheesecloth, spoon, molds, uh, measuring cups, uh, measuring uh, teaspoons, whatever. All of it's boiled in the, uh, in the pot we're going to make the cheese in. Entire area has been cleared. Everything cleared off, washed down, and then spray it. Star sand, this is what I use. This is the best thing to sanitize with if you're not boiling it. So I mix this up in a squirt bottle, spray down the whole area, wipe it down, let it air dry. In the equipment we don't boil, uh, I mix up a, a five gallon bucket of mixed up with star sand once again. And that's good to just have on hand. Just a bucket of star sand to dunk your hands in or you know, whatever. If you gotta clean something, you got it right there and you can sanitize it. So those are the most important things right here, I think, is get everything sanitized. Because if you don't have it sanitized and you get the wrong uh, bacteria in your cheese, it uh, may, not, may not taste too good. It may even make you sick. Okay, another big important factor, the milk you use, okay? We're going with whole milk, and this milk is non-homogenized, okay? Definitely want to use non-homogenized milk for your cheese making. I'm fortunate enough I can find this pretty close to the house. Store has it. Now this is right here in Ohio, Snowville Creamery. So this is really good milk for cheese making. Okay, to heat the milk, you're going to need a double boiler of some sort. I'll have a double boiler. I got a heavy stainless pan and a stainless steel pie pan. And what I do is I fill that up till it's, you know, half inch or so below. And I can put my pot right on top of there, sitting right above the water. It's going to be nice, gentle heat. You don't want to heat the milk too quickly. You'll burn it. So you can't put the pot on direct heat. Okay, so everything's sanitized. We're going to go ahead and start adding our milk. This recipe calls for two and a half gallons of milk and a one quart of heavy cream. Okay, this will yield about a, a two and a half, three pound cheese. All right, we got all that milk and cream in there. Now time to add our first ingredient. And this is what makes blue cheese, blue cheese. Penicillium Rocaforti. You can buy this at New England Cheese Making. I got this on Amazon. I want one quarter teaspoon. Sprinkle it all over the top. So this is a cool thing about making your own blue cheeses. If you like a really mild blue cheese, you can add less of this. If you like your blue cheese really strong, we'll go ahead and add some more. Uh, but for my taste, for this recipe, a uh, one level quarter teaspoon is going to give you a pretty good... That's what I like. It's not real strong. It's mild, creamy. Still. Okay, so that's rehydrated for a minute or so. I'm just going to stir that. About a minute. I want to get it thoroughly incorporated in this milk. The next thing we're going to do is we have to heat the milk. Okay. So our target temperature for this cheese is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to turn on the heat under our makeshift double boiler. Put that on medium heat. And we're going to bring this up to uh, 86 degrees. Then we'll add our uh, mesophilic culture. All right, we have hit our target temperature of 86 degrees, 30 degrees Celsius. 
Now we're going to add our culture. We're using a mesophilic uh, type culture. You can get this on a cheesemaking.com, New England Cheesemaking Supply, I believe it is. So this calls for one eighth teaspoon. I don't have an eighth teaspoon, but I got a sixteenth. So we'll do two of them. And the same as the penicillin broken 40. Sprinkle it on the top, let it sit for a minute or so. Uh, then we'll stir it in. Alright, so it's been about a minute. So we're gonna get this stirred in. The temperature is creeping up a little bit, so we're gonna take this and move her off the heat. Stir this culture in. Good solid minute. Alright, we got that stirred in thoroughly. So what we do now. Put a lid on it, and we're going to let that ripen for 30 minutes. It's all right. 30 minute ripening time is up. It also happens in that 30 minute ripening time, that is just when the uh, culture is uh, converting the lactose into lactic acid. So you know different cheeses have different ripening times, depending on the acidity of that cheese. Add our calcium chloride. Recipe calls for one quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride. I'm going to that. A quarter cup of bottled water. Don't use tap water. It's got chlorine in it. It'll kill everything. It'll kill all the good culture. The root of the cheese. That's what we're doing. Get that going. We'll stir that for about a minute. Good on that. Next ingredient is, uh, let's see what we got, one half teaspoon of animal rennet. Rennet, this is the chemical that's going to turn this milk into massive jelly, curds. Okay? It's a chemical that comes from the inside of a calf's stomach. You can get vegetable rennet, synthetic. That kind of grosses you out. Most of my calf stomach, but I use animal rennet. And once again, we'll do a quarter cup bottled water. Get that stirring. Same thing with this. Stir for one minute. You don't want to stir the rennet for any more than one minute. Because the uh, rennet. It wants to curdle the milk. So you just want to get it mixed thoroughly to let it sit and do its thing. Pretty good. We'll put a lid on that. Set our timer for one hour, 30 minutes, 90 minutes. We should have a nice curd by then. Been an hour and a half. That's what we're going to do. We're going to check the curd for a clean break. What we do. Take a spoon or whatever, put in there, and kind of lift it up. Oh yeah, see how it breaks nice and clean. What we want. So what we got to do is we have to scoop all these curds into this uh, colander that's lined with cheesecloth, and it's inside a big stainless bowl. So let's take a little bit of time. We're going to try not to. Uh, Break them up a whole lot. Just kind of scoop them out little by little. Yeah, it's a nice curve there. Real nice. You should get a pretty good yield off this cheese. Alright, we got all the curds in there. Now what I like to do, now we gotta let these curds sit for 90 minutes in that whey bath. So you want to maintain that temperature. So I take all that hot water, uh, put it in the pan, I just set this bowl right on top of it. I keep it nice and warm. Let's go ahead and check the temperature. We are still at just a tick under. We're right on 30, 86, 85. Alright, again, we're going to set our timer for one and a half hours. And let that sit in that way bath. Okay, 
hour and a half is up and it's sitting in the way bath. So what we're gonna do now is down here. So what we're gonna do is get the uh, four corners of this cheese cloth time to go. some sort. It's been sanitized, of course. Pretty much. Put that. Some way to hang that. Okay. So we're just going to let that drip there for about, about 30, 45 minutes. Make sure your knots are getting tight. You want that thing coming untied on you. You're going to have a big mess of curves on the floor. Okay, 30 minutes is up. Still dripping just a little bit. Well, what we do now is we're going to take this bag and wrap this thing up. I'm going to take a uh, sanitized zip tie. Tie that dude up tight. Get it unwind here, no big deal. Just want that zip tie. Alright, we gotta come back and retighten it. We will. So we're gonna let that go about about another three, four hours. Alright, so what I like to do is grab it right there at the tie. And uh you can feel it kind of slipping on you, kind of twist and pull that zip tie down as you twist and it'll We'll tighten up for you there. I do that about two or three times throughout the uh, three, four hour drain. Next step is to break up the curds. Add the salt. So there you go. As you can see, it's still kind of creamy. We'll dump these curds out with the cloth. Break these curves up. About one inch pieces. So we got our salt, which is two tablespoons and one half teaspoon. We're going to add half of that. So I'll mix it through. Break up them curves a little more. Need be. Plastic boards, put down a cheese mat, which is pretty much a bamboo sushi mat. I'll take this cloth and we'll start putting these curds in the mold. Pack them down as you go. Pile it on there. Holding it over. Yeah, it looks like a lot now, but it's going to it's gonna settle down pretty good. I'm going to put this board mat on top. So we're going to let that go for two hours. We're going to turn this thing over every 15 minutes. This whole deal. Flip it over. Let it drain off any away. Flip that again. 15 minutes. We got an hour and a half to go. Okay, two hours is up. What we do now is we leave this cheese in the mold for four days. 
and we're going to turn it about yeah, two to three times a day. Definitely two. If you can do three, even better. Okay, it's been four days. We've been flipping that dude two, three times a day. It is looking good. And as you can see, the blue mold is definitely starting to grow. So that's what you want. That's what you want to see. So what we do after the four days is we're going to carefully uh, take off all this cloth. Delicate at this point. Just be careful. We can soak that, wash it, boil it. It looks kind of nasty, but you can definitely reuse that. Okay, so the next step is called rubbing up. You got a sanitized uh, butter knife, and pretty much all you do is this rub the entire. Say you keep rubbing it, it gets kind of like butter. Right. Oop! Whoa! Lost the chunk there. It's all right. Smooth her back in. Cheese will shrink a lot too. All right, so next step, we just have our uh, thermometer, we sanitized it. And we need to poke some holes in this cheese. Got to get somewhere for the uh, blue mold veins to grow. Let's go about an inch apart. Don't go too close to the edge, or you may break out. It's still a pretty pretty delicate cheese at this point so okay what we do flip her over same thing okay do a couple through the side So we got our little cheese fridge here. I'll we'll set that in there on a mat. And we need to turn that every day uh, for the first uh, week, week and a half. And after that, we're going to turn it once a week. And this cheese will be done in uh, uh, the last one I did, I did in uh, two months, a week and a half. And it turned out great. Uh, we're going to show you a video of that one here in a second and uh, show you what it looks like when it's finished here in a couple months what it tastes like all right been about it ain't been three months only been about uh probably two months week and a half but i'll tell you what it's just getting so damn dry i'm just afraid it's gonna you know go all the hell if i don't cut it up soon and get her vacuum sealed so we're gonna go a little early we're gonna cut into it see what she looks like Moment of truth. Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. Boy, I tell you what. We've got good blue about to the edge. I'll tell you what, it could have. So this is. Oh yeah, oh well, it's definitely not too dry. We could have went a little longer. That's all right. We'll vacuum seal it. We'll eat some more. Oh, that is just. Oh my God. Here, let's not mess around here. Let's, let's cut off a piece. Hmm. Don't necessarily want to eat that rind. I don't think. Hmm. Mm. Definitely on the mild side, but definitely got that good quality uh, blue cheese creaminess. And, mm. 
that is just I ain't shitting you that's one of the best damn blue cheese I've ever ate we made it right here so what I'll do is I'll quarter this Oh, look at that. Mmm. Quarter of this. Maybe even cut these in half. Make a little small wedge. A little nice little blue cheese wedge. We'll vacuum seal them up. They'll last a good while. So there you have it. Some homemade Stilton. Basement Gourmet.